This is a Rolex Air King. And this is a Rolex Air King. But one of them is a true king. The other one is more dressed like a court jester. Which one is which? So, two air kings. One is the one to have, and the other one is the one to wear. Let's see how that works. What I have here is the reference 116900. What I have here is the reference 126900. The new one. This Air King came out earlier this year and replaced this Air King that debuted in 2016. But the Air King has a long history, of course. The Air King debuted in 1945. It was a small 34 millimeter watch designed for pilots. And in 1957, the reference 5500 came about and that is the Air King most people know very well because it was produced for 37 years. That's a very long time. But the Air King that debuted in 2016 and the new ones have little to do with the original Air Kings. Both these watches measure 40 millimeters and they have a dial that is completely new and completely bonkers, some might say. But there is a reason behind the looks of this dial. The Air King reference 116900 is the result of a collaboration between Rolex and the Bloodhound project, an attempt to break the land speed record. Rolex and speed records go hand in hand. They were always associated to Sir Malcolm Campbell, for instance, world famous, especially in England for breaking world speed records in insanely fast cars. So now they were teaming up. Bloodhound and Rolex is a historically correct and logical combination. And inside the hyper-modern rocket car were instruments that looked a little bit like this. Rolex developed the instruments, two dashboard clocks, and after this, a watch inspired by those instruments came out. There's of course nothing wrong and nothing new with finding inspiration in dashboard instruments. But translating inspiration into something that looks good on a watch dial turns out to be very, very difficult. Let's have a closer look at the five. On an instrument, a five without a zero in front doesn't really matter. Because an instrument in a car that wants to go Mach 1 needs to be functional, easy to read. Yes, a watch also needs to be easily readable. But there's also the aesthetical aspect. And the five without the zero doesn't look very balanced. When Rolex introduced this Air King, they also introduced a new version of the 39mm Explorer. Until that day, the Explorer had the same shiny 3, 6 and 9. But in a watch designed to be perfectly readable, the shiny Arabic numerals were a bit of a misfit. So they changed them for non-shiny ones. Apparently, they had a lot of 3, 6 and 9 in shiny material left. And strangely enough, these Arabic numerals appeared in a dashboard-like dial. It doesn't make any sense to me. This is a tool watch, right? It's modeled after an instrument. This is a watch you wear on the wrist while breaking the land speed record. But then why doesn't it have the sporty, rugged case? Why does it have the rounded case? Why doesn't it have a crown guard? Why doesn't it have the safety clasp? Somehow, I feel that Rolex released its watch without thinking it through too much. And that is very unlike Rolex. 
Let me summarize. A dial that is unbalanced, with strange shiny numerals, a case without crown guards, that is a, a non-tool watch-like thing, and then the bracelet, the Oyster bracelet, without the safety clasp. Come 2022, and the Air King saw a fantastic evolution. Here it is. At a glance, they look the same. But in detail, they are very, very different. And in the end, the devil is in the detail, and that goes especially for watches. Rolex fixed the Air King. They fixed it because they put a zero in front of the five. Easy to spot. They got rid of the shiny numerals. Now they are white, luminous, so they make more sense visually, but also functionally. The case changed. A way they did with the rounded case. This has the sports case with the crown protection and also the crown is now bigger. And then of course, the bracelet. It has, it's so safe, I can't even open it. It now has the safety clasp. And they didn't stop there. They also made the bezel a tiny bit smaller, meaning the dial comes out a little bit bigger because the overall size of the case is still 40 millimeters. What's also interesting is that the old Air King is bigger, meaning thicker, than the new Air King. And that is because there is a new movement inside the new Air King. The old Air King has a case with a height of just over 13 millimeters. The new one has a case of just over 11.5 millimeters. Why? Because in the old Air King, the movement needed a Faraday cage to be anti-magnetic. The new caliber, the 3120, uses the parachrome hairspring and therefore doesn't need the Faraday cage to be anti-magnetic. And since we're on the topic of movements, I should also point out that as of the 2016 Air King, all movements used by Rolex are chronometer movements, whereas in the past, Air Kings used non-chronometer precision movements. That also says something about the importance of the Air King. The Air King was never the top dog, but now at least it has a bit more pedigree because of the chronometer movements. Small details make a big difference. That much is clear. But it also leads me to the question, which one is the best to have? And also, which one is the best to wear? Well, that's, that's of course, a collector's question and it's also a very interesting question. I would wear the new one because it looks more balanced but I would like to have the old one because it is now discontinued and was only made for six years. So this one is the one to have, the oddball. This one is the one to wear and that leads me to the price of 7,000 euros. That's what Rolex wants for this very sturdy, odd looking, because it's still odd looking, it's still a polarizing design, but at least it's balanced. The Air King Reference 5500 was made for 37 years. Now, do you think that this design can last 37 years? Is this Air King the face of a watch that will write history? That's a very difficult question to answer, but it's still fun to think about it. How many dial variations can you do of this? Or is this a one shot? I still don't know. What do you think? I'm curious to know how you stand. What do you think of the Air King? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.